Don't get political. What do you mean? Don't do political. I'm like Scott Morrison, bro. No, no, no let's have like Scott Morrison. Oh, do okay. me. Uh, hey, are we on? Do me George Bush. Yeah, but I'm trying to get a good. Oh, angle. thanks. Usually <laughs> I, I stitched you up. You just made the uh, Wait, so <laughs> the pre episode. <laughs> it's the Abajay podcast. Let's go. So we're on. And the next guest on the podcast, we've got a special guest, a man of many talents, an artist, a one of one, brother Ali. Owls, Eagles, how are we? Shut up, man. Great, how are you? Well, not too bad, you know. This is the first time we actually meet in person. It he is. He left me hanging. Where the memes are coming. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm a bit taken away by the podcast, so uh, it's not the first time that I sit in front of a microphone and speak to an audience, so. No, God bless you. But, yeah, been a while. No, God bless you. Now, talk to us about the artworks, the inspiration behind the artwork. Just for context for the viewers, I came across your page. I was inspired. I seen some after Sayyid, Rahmatullahi Ali. And I saw something that could be hung up in my house. I saw something that was a unique piece, a one of one, something that had your touch. Then I continue to stalk the page, go down, and I'm like, wow, this is something different. And then I saw Saad's shop. You did Saad's shop. I'm like, that's it, we've stopped. I did, I did. Talk to us about everything in your endeavors, all your missions, you know, and your artistic touch. Where did it come from? You always have it? Well,. Well, that's a good question. It's actually a typical question of where did it come from, but it is a long story. Not too long, actually. I'm just uh, one of the basic stories of... I've been drawing since I was a kid, and I basically grew up with this talent. Um, obviously, you'd know that being given the talent, you'd be only given so much, and it is what you make out of it in the end. So either you pursue something or you let it go, and. I pursued it, I pursued it for many years growing up. Um, I did use it as a as an escape route, a, um, a form of, to escape reality basically, um, to empty my thoughts, to fill my thoughts. Um, I did stop for many years actually. I stopped, I stopped drawing. The last time I drew a piece before I did start again was probably 13 years, so I did stop for about 13 years. I remember the last piece that I drew, and I remember the piece that I drew again when I first started up. Um, so that was a good 13 years apart. Um, what, you stopped for 13 years? Now, we know it's something that you've enjoyed. Uh, well, it's a God-given talent, you're saying. Look, I think, I think growing up in an, in a, in an Arab household, you yeah. know, to be... To be uh, to be very specific with that, an yeah. Arab household, because obviously with our parents, you know, you hear the whole um, put these things away, get a job. Uh, yeah. Uh, these are just hobbies. They're Doctor, not lawyer, uh, yeah, dentist. Yeah, 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 yeah. You only have those three options. Maybe Plumber, electrician. Maybe one day you can build us a house. Maybe, maybe one yeah. day you can fix us the, the toilet when you blow it up. That's true. Uh, whatever the case may be. So. Uh, realistically, growing up, you know, especially being in this part of the world, Sydney to be, once again, pretty direct. And the face of Australia, uh, we've got the map here. Oh, We're mate. representing. We're on, <laughs> on a national scale. True blue Aussie all the way. <laughs> Born and bred. Um, so, as I say, you put your toys away and, you know, you grow up and... You do the things that you would do to basically survive or um, to try and... Uh, to make ends meet, to get you yeah, to get to your goal. you know, to about the family, you know, the, the, For sure. to impress your parents, you know, to make something yeah. of yourself. But you had to believe in yourself in some way, shape or form because I can relate to your story. When I first started podcasting, oh, I had this image or this imagination or this goal that I can get to know someone, why do you do something, what inspires you, because now you can tell the next young artist, the struggles that you went through, they'll relate, and inshallah, they might not have to go through certain things, because life's too short to learn from your own mistakes. If you can learn from others, you might skip 5, 10, nah. 15 years. Look, in saying that, I do truly believe that if... The saying goes, learn from other people's mistakes. For sure. But you never truly know... Or appreciate it. Or unless appreciate the mistake it. unless you do it yourself. For sure. You will never take on the, the idea or the, or the consequences that will allow you to reach certain levels mm. 
if you don't make that mistake yourself, because for sure, for you're, sure. you're not taking in that after the, the the aftermath of the reaction that somebody else got, you can't take that out. You can't take that from them 100%. and put it into yourself. You'll appreciate so, it more, but sometimes you want to skip through that. Like for my example, when I wanted to start this venture, it was more like, oh, what do you want to be a clown for? Or you want to jarisna on social media, or you want to make a mockery <laughs> of yourself. And I'm like, where in my pitch did I say that? Okay, let me, let me ask you a question. Yeah. I'll, I'll, ask, I'll ask you a question. The day that your, let's say, your father walked in, okay, Allah khalilaka wa ta'ala bro. If he walked in one day and saw a microphone in front of you and he saw this nice little Australia behind you, mm. okay? Are you telling me that he, your, your father would walk up to you and tell you, good job, keep going, you're making a difference of yourself? They're not. Because... This day and age, okay, the world that we live in now is completely different to what they knew, what they grew up with. That's true. Our That's parents, true. when they were at the age of 14, 15, they were out working, slaving away, laborers, uh, wherever it was. My dad was international. We went overseas, came back, they're hustling, they're on the groin. Well, I wish my dad done that as well, but my dad was a businessman as well. Okay. He opened up shops, he yeah. worked in the rails. You know, he had to make ends meet for his family and to put in his hand as well. Now, anything could make a living these days in, in, in this society that we live in now. You can make podcasts, you can make TikToks, you could make, uh, you could be Instagram famous, whatever yeah, it is. There's sure. different forms of um, payment now to, to make a living for sure. Through certain ways, because the way of the world has changed. Now, but that's besides the case. I didn't actually start drawing to make a dollar or make it, a, basically make it a business. That wasn't my intention. My drawings were wholeheartedly for myself. And if somebody saw my work, you know, oh, look, Ali, I would, could you please do me something? You know, I would really like a drawing. Yeah, no worries. So... My original adventure of this all was basically a 2H pencil. If you know what a 2H mm. is, you got your, your, your 2H, your F, your HBs. You know, it's just basically different, uh, different texture of pencils. It's the... It's technicalities when it comes yeah, to pencils. Yeah, it's, it's very technical. I've heard of HB, there I didn't is, hear anything else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you, I remember that. Your normal pencil that you would get at school, That's if you were to buy something, is either a 2H or a HB. Yeah, I will HB Yeah, one. and then yeah. you've got 2B, 3B, 4B. The more you go up, the more harsher the, the pencil gets, the, really? the lead gets. Well, Correct. And what so, difference does that make for the layman, for people like me watching? Well, for my dad watching, because he's probably watching, he better still be watching. <laughs> Well, um, if you want to talk detail and you want to start shading, you need 3B, 4B, 5B, 6B, 7B and the rest. Oh, wow. <laughs> and then you need a stump to shade. Wow. And to, uh... But yeah, that's pencils. Well, that's, that's how I started off. So I started off with one, one pencil, one paper. Um, not just one, obviously. Not like I'm selling off a, a sound record. I started off with a mixtape. <laughs> but I had, you know, I was working on paper and pencils and... Mm. I started off from there again, and I done, you know, I done a drawing for a friend of mine, and then another friend of mine, and another friend of mine, and then it just kept going and going and going. We got from lead to pencil, to painting, to watercolor, to to, to graphite, to charcoal. I done it all. I, for many, many, many years, I practiced on all mediums. That's what they call them, different types of mediums, which is different types of um, what you use. Okay. So, uh, paint brushes are medium. Um, Textures is a medium. It's, it, it's, that's what it's considered. Um, yeah, then I started off with that, and then I just kept reaching basically higher, higher levels, um, year after year after year after year, until I, I basically um, self-taught myself. I've actually never done an art class in my life, to be honest with you. Wow. Um, and then I reached basically what I view is the highest level, which is airbrush. Airbrush is a completely different and difficult concept from all the other mediums. <clears throat> the, the closest to it would probably be spray cans. But with spray cans, if I'm doing, if I'm doing a, a, let's say a 50 by 50 centimeter canvas, <clears throat> you wouldn't be able to use a spray can. You wouldn't be able to get any amount of detail because a spray can would let out so much okay. at once. Whereas an airbrush, it gives you the realistic effect 
which is what I specialize in now, which is art realism. And it gives you the utmost detail, but you can also have it thinner than a lead pencil. Well, so, okay, I did not know that. So if I'm, so for instance, if somebody calls me up, like your friend um, at the barber shop, yeah, he wanted an airbrush done, and you know, he wanted it detailed. So okay, and. To expect, look, I don't expect everyone to know the physics and everything behind it because it, it's not common knowledge. It really isn't. Mm -hmm. You would just know, look, you know, paint and spray can and airbrush maybe. But to know the level of detail that you would get between all of them is a completely different concept. Wow. So to do that war, basically, if I'm going to do a war in airbrush and then detail it, it's basically grab a lead pencil and colour in the whole war with a lead pencil. That's the work that I'll do. So wow. that's the level that I've reached now, okay? And it started off now, I, I do it as a, a, on a professional scale, you know, labelled as an artist. Um, uh, it's been about eight years now. Wow. So talking to your younger self, if you were to look into the ball, the crystal ball, oh. and you were to see that you would be doing work to this level and to this magnitude, and to have the fame and the notoriety on the platform, because you do, you have pull, you have people that are messaging you constantly, like we've, we just broke bread, we jumped on the pod, Indeed. and your phone hasn't stopped with a notification. That's the reality of where we are. It's because <laughs> your service, your quality, your work speaks Correct. for itself. Correct, correct. I, I, I what honestly, would you have thought though? Would you have thought you'd ever be in this position as a youngster? Um, when people ask me, I'll tell them, yeah. <coughs> I always knew that I was going to talk with people. I always knew that I was destined for that. How I was going to get there, I don't know. I knew that eventually I'd find a way. Look, obviously, you've been in the position that you're in now making podcasts. You're a talker. Mm. You would know that at a certain level, you'd be able to sit with someone and talk. Yeah. And, you know interact and uh, converse with that person, you know, get ideas, exchange concepts and whatnot and so forth. But when you're talking something that requires such a talent, yes, you will get there, but what are the sacrifices that you have to make in order to get there? I mean, anyone could do... Uh, you, you could chase any dream that you'd want, For any sure. hobby that you'd want. Yeah. If there's no sacrifice, then you're not doing it correctly. 100%. If you're not sacrificing, then you never reach your end goal. Okay. There has to be sacrifice in order for you to achieve the level that you want to get to. If you're not willing to sacrifice you wholeheartedly, if you're not willing to sit with yourself, have a conversation with yourself and sacrifice and draw it out on a board and follow that dream all along the way, you never get there. Yeah. If you're going to slack off, if you're going to, oh, look, I'm too tired, not today, tomorrow. Tomorrow's always tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow, maybe tomorrow, tomorrow after that. Yeah. It's forever going to be tomorrow. You're never going to do it. You know, like you said, oh, tomorrow or today. So, like I said, I never actually planned on getting this far. Yes, I would have loved to. I mean... When I was drawing on a piece of paper, when, when people were t asking me for drawings, you know, hey man, can you do me a tattoo design or can you draw me my, you know, a, a picture of me and my wife or me and my partner or whatever it, whatever it was. And I would get the feedback and the saying of, you're an artist. I'd never accept it. Hmm. I would never accept it. Please don't call me an artist. It's too much of... You didn't want the burden. I, I, I didn't. I, I didn't want to take on that. You know that image, that role, because I didn't deserve it just yet. Okay. Because there was no sacrifice. Okay. Yeah. There was no sacrifice involved. No one can just pick up anything and become anyone they wanted to be. You can't. Yeah. You have to work for it. You have to work towards it. You have to sacrifice. Sacrificial things. It, it's. It's everything. Because. At the end of the day, when you do meet your goal and you look back and you think of all the things that you struggled and you gave up, and I gave up my, my late nights and, I, and I, I stopped talking to all my friends 
and you know all these important things family gatherings you know being out with people whatever it is i gave it all up to sit in my room and better myself and better and better and better and better and better and And look now it took me a long time to actually accept the word you know oh hey wow look at your work you are a true artist and this is only a few years like a not even like a like four years ago Five years ago when I said to myself, I would now classify myself, yes, I would take on the comment of you are an artist because I'm capable. I am capable of imagining putting my thoughts on a piece of paper. You know, it it takes a lot of mindset, a lot of mind control, a lot of body control as well to actually put yourself through it. It's it, It's a lot of ache from from inside and out to actually reach the level of outcome that you want to achieve and give, especially for your clients. Yeah, that's a totally different thing. I... If you're, sorry, but if, if, you, if, if you wanted to tile your house, okay? Yeah. If you wanted to tile your house and you pick the utmost expensive tile, okay? And you pay top dollar, top quality because you know that this guy can provide it. Yeah. And you trust in him, and you give him extra, okay? Not of what he's asking prices, but you already know that his price is somewhat on a medium slash high scale because he can be trusted for his quality of work. He's got to deliver, yeah, for sure. You have to deliver. 100% I expect that, yeah. If I wasn't able to deliver, like you said, my phone wouldn't be blowing up. That's true. People would look at my work and think, yeah, just... my 50 year old kid can do that. Yeah, no, that's that's for sure. But the level of work that I produce for my clients, not just for them, but for myself, because mm. me as an artist, I can't let something go unless it's to absolute perfection. Mm. There is no margin for error, zero, zero tolerance. Yeah, It's zero tolerance within myself because I'm a big perfectionist. Oh, you see, they're all perfectionists. Both. Both. <laughs> Both, both. You have to have both. If you yeah. want to achieve, okay, you have to be at both. OCD, that's a different story. <laughs> that's a different story. But yes, I am a very, very OCD. You can ask my wife that. How does she deal with you with the painting, with the stress going back <laughs> forth? You got these expectations, deadline, all these people wanting an artwork. And then you got, and you got well, what's a wife? What's a relationship? What's a dynamic? You're locking uh, yourself in the room, champ. It's not easy for the viewers. Just for everyone watching, it's good to get an I, insight. I do, I do lock myself in the room sometimes, but you know what? There's a majority of the times when my wife is in there locked in as well. So she joins me in there. She sits down. She's my, my uh, she's my content creator. She's my photographer. She's my videographer. She's my she's my whole support group. Um, it, it, she's everything. So. My God bless us. Allah thank you, thank you. For thank the viewers you, that you, don't you. see and cannot see, she's also behind the camera. She's so also behind it, the camera. You have to have the support group. You know, you have to have people behind you because when you have that strength, you can deliver work that you do and you can inspire the people. Of course you can. What's your favorite project? What's the favorite, your most iconic memory early on? Now we're going we're gonna to build our way. What was the first project where you said, validation, I'm now an artist, I'll take it on. We heard earlier on that you were hesitant. What was the piece that pushed you over the line? Can you remember it? You said it was about four or five years ago. You can come out. You got to. You can't be too humble on us. I can remember it. I know which one it is, and it's the same one that keeps popping up in my head. So it has to be. Yeah. It has to be. And majority, majority, majority of people. Every time I say to the people, you know, or they know me from that job. Oh, you're the one that done so forth. You know what I'm Yes, it's me. Um, <laughs> well, I'm I just wanna. Um, I do. I, I try to think a lot of times. Um, you know, was it really? You? Which one was it? Usually, it's everyone's start project. It's everyone's first, hmm. but it's not. My first took me to higher heights. Okay. Correct. My first one did. But the one, the, the one that claimed me, the one that claimed me and everybody claimed me, basically, you are an artist of all sorts. Like, mm. you can do anything with a, with a pencil. Is the job I've done at Burger Cartel. Oh, okay. You did Burger Cartel. 
I done burger cutto and that was all with an airbrush. So like I said before, imagine, I'm pretty sure a lot of your followers, a, a lot of my followers as well, they know burger cutto in Rockdale. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's it it's, the game it's not way. just famous for its food. Mm. They have absolutely amazing food, top quality service, everything. But the artwork itself, I've, had, I've got a lot of people that told me, look, I went there just to see the artwork. Wow. And that was basically, if you imagine it, with a pencil. As thin as a pencil, that whole shop. That shop took me, I think, a, a month. A, a month, a month to do. Yeah. It was all with a high quality detail. It still stands till now. I think that was about... It was, I can't remember exactly how long ago now. It could have been nearly 10 years ago. No, 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 no. It would have been about, I think, about four years ago now. Really? Maybe. Yeah, when they opened their new shop, not the old one. Oh, okay, the second one. Yes, okay, the second okay, one. Okay, I was going off the first one. No, no, right. the, the, the second one, the one that's got all the gangsters on the wall, then you've got the... Um, Gives you that you, New York You've got war. the New York City, yeah, and then yeah, you've got yeah. Vegas Strip. Um, you've got the palm trees and whatnot, the casino, you've got all that. and Yeah, I think that, that, that one definitely um, set me on the platform. It, it really did. And then from there, it just, it just stretched. It just kept going, you know, um, all around these areas, city side, uh, north, north Sydney side, um, down towards... Uh, Manly and, and so you've and been all over. All oh, over I've, I've been all over. I've been uh, I've been domestic Melbourne, Queensland, Canberra. Um, well, wow. Brisbane. I've been to Brisbane. I've done jobs there. There's, there's there is a lot of work where you know the client asks not to. For sure. Yeah. So especially when you're dealing yeah, with that yeah, yeah, you have to respect everyone's For privacy sure. at the end of the day. Not not everybody likes to have their stuff paraded and mm. you know advertised. You know, sometimes it's it's someone's home, someone's uh, for sure, you know, for sure. safekeeping. Hundred percent. So, so we won't go into too much details with those pieces. We're going to get to how you came on my radar and how you came, how I came across you. But what's the most famous or the most, you know, that starstruck moment? I'm working on this job. I'm working on this project. Without going into too much specifics, who was it? Did, yeah. If you worked on like a celebrity house, where you're like, well, I'm here, or a project, or what was the most high-profile uh, assignment that you've had? <sighs> I mean, you've had it in the States, you've had this, that and the other. Any standout event, person, location? Put him on the spot here. I have, yeah, I, I, I have, but... With who? I, I, just... I mean, to go in the state is big enough. I mean, the podcast went to Singapore and Malaysia. And I was like, well, I'm actually going on a project <laughs> for the people. You know, and like it was, it was weird because you tell someone, especially because when I grew up, we loved sports. Tell me that I'm going to cover Liverpool, Bayern Munich and Tottenham to have pitch side access, dressing room access, training sessions, games, vlogging. Yeah, of course. You know, I wouldn't have believed you. I wouldn't have believed you as a kid. I'm like, hey, yeah, right. I, I, I might not even get that access across the road, grassroots level. So like, I'm, I, I'm only guessing... That you might have similarly had a experience where your expertise, someone of of someone of high, uh, I can't think of I can't think of, of something like that other such right now, eh? I'm here on the spot. That's fine. I have like I I have had a lot of like overseas work, you know, in in uh, in America, in the UK. Oh yeah. Um, in Greece. Um, I never actually went there though. No, okay. I'm, I'm not going to say that I went there when I didn't. Um, but still, for your work to get that far, yeah, yeah, no, means no. something. Yeah, yeah because um, I also had a TikTok. I, I have a TikTok, but I don't. I, I don't pay attention to it at all. I don't even open it. Um, I posted. I posted a. I posted a couple of videos, and one of my videos I woke up one day and it was already on. Uh, it was already on. One point something million oh, well, the, ne the next day, and you know you can imagine a bunch of messages and inboxes and people jumping into my into my Instagram. Hey, you know, can you come? Can you can you come to the UK? Can you come to Greece? Can you come to uh, the United States? Can you come to Mexico? 
And I was, yeah, 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 I'll come wherever you want, yeah, yeah. But then I thought to myself, no, I've also got another job here. I've got another two jobs here that I'm trying to take care of, a business and another business. And I didn't have time for it at the moment. So, uh, but to do something for someone on a higher scale, I, I actually, I, I don't know. I do have someone, I do have someone in mind, okay. Um, he is a person of high... Um, he is a, a, a very well-known man, mm. um, very, very high in the community. Okay. Very high in the community, I, but I cannot disclose his name because for what he wants is at the house, at his house, his newly built house. So that I cannot disclose. So, okay. Yeah, no, so, but you, you deal with these yes. high-end clients. These yes. people that are willing to get you this, that, and the other. There is else. a lot, there is a lot of people that you know, Ali hush hush. Of course, well, you, you know, expect him with that type, that tier of. A hundred percent, you know. So I'm able to work with them, uh, with with them people. You know, I, I respect your wishes. I respect your, um, you know, whatever you want from me. If you don't want me to advertise, if you don't want me to showcase, whatever it is, because there is a lot of. There is a lot of religious stuff that I do, okay? Okay. Um, now, you might not know this, but there's, there's, there's a very, very, very short uh, like scale-based people that know how to do Arabic calligraphy. Not, every, not a lot of people I've know how to do Arabic work. calligraphy. I've seen your work. You do Arabic calligraphy. Yeah, so, <laughs> so growing, up as, growing up from when I was a young kid, you know, my Arabic was always... Uh, Arabic, 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 Arabic. So alhamdulillah, my, my parents were really strict on that. So I learned Arabic. I went overseas for three years. I went to school overseas. I had tutors. I had um, multiple Saturday schools. I even done, I even done Arabic for my HSC, HSC. I had tutors here, religious tutors, religious schools. You name it, I had it. Yeah. So... If anything, Arabic would have been my number one language rather than my English. If I was to okay. speak a, a word of English at home, it was oh, yeah, okay. straight away. Okay. Only Arabic. So the Arabic, alhamdulillah, it done really well with me in terms of turning it into um, the Arabic calligraphy side. So I do get a lot of people that, look, I want you to do me like a big piece of a, like a surah. You know, and no one, no one can do that. You can do it. People, a lot of, I'll say a lot of people. You know, Allah uh, yiftah habushan we resulton we yatiyon kamen. But you know, different scales. Yeah, they, they do it on on paper. You know, it's it's a lot easier. But when you're talking big scale stuff, it becomes extremely hard. Talking a mosque, yeah, yeah, center, yeah, this, that, the other. Yes, yes. You're talking, yes. you know, meters upon meters of walls. Yeah. Uh, you know. My heart stops when someone says to me, I want you to do me eight al kursi you know. Or, <laughs> uh, can you come do Surat al-Baqarah in my house? Uh, Might be there for a couple of weeks. Yes, <laughs> a couple of weeks. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Um, th th there's a lot of clients that, that are like that, you know. This 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 latest client, you know. Um, uh, Off camera, I'm going to guess who it is. Yeah, the, uh, Allah yate wa Wallah, he, he, is. Is, he is a true gentleman. He is a gentleman, one of the probably the best people that I have met and come across. Um, he was actually getting someone from, he was looking from, uh, he told me, he looked in Turkey, he looked in Iran, he looked in Syria. He, could, he was willing to get somebody from overseas to come and do him the calligraphy at home. And then he stumbled upon my page and he was... It was well, like I was. It was like, I've like, got to get in contact, said, well, we've got to make a piece. Yeah, I, I finally found someone who can do murals mixed with the calligraphy. So that's what we're doing now at his house. And I would say that, you know, on a very, very high and respectable level, I would put him... He's a champion. He's a he's a true champion. T1. They're the top yeah, of yeah, people yeah. that is, you want to work. They don't they don't need to be famous to 100%, 100%. be to, to, to be you know up there. It's it's uh, the quality of the person at the end of the day to to what comes to mind. I've had I've had well I don't even know his name. He's one of the he's from a dancer group. Um, he was famous and and whatnot. He still is famous. I, I I can't remember what his name was. Did a piece for him. But 
No, he wanted me to do a piece. He, uh, he brought me into his studio, massive studio in up towards um up towards Kellyville Way, past Bella Vista, and you know we met and we sat down and whatnot. But if you're gonna top, if you're gonna talk top tier people mm. on a respectable scale, I would put. Oh, for sure. And, and are they That's the types maybe. of people that you want to work for? Because I could only imagine the types of artwork that you'd be requested. Jeez, you can you can ask for anything. I, I get mm -hmm. asked. I get asked for. Yeah, I do. I do. I get asked for. Uh... Whenever you want to restart, we're back. We're back. Technical difficulties. Kenya Bonlina. Right. Yes, we're talking about the uh, okay the so, code in the art world. So I have. Well, I, I don't. I don't. There is actually multiple codes that I have for myself. Mm. One of the codes is I don't go any. I don't. I do not go over anybody's work. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you're calling me to to come and fix somebody else's job that you didn't like, I'm sorry, I won't fix it for you. Okay. As an artist, as a respectable artist, I will not fix another artist's work. Mm -hmm. You, as a client, you prefer to go or even chose to go with a specific artist. Okay, which I've had. Multiple, multiple, multiple times, okay? Um, a lot of clients that reach out and tell me, hey, you know, I would like a quote and whatnot, or look, this guy quoted me, so forth, so forth. Go with them. If you want quality, I'm your man. If you want time and low budget sort of thing, you know, it's not even about the budget at the end of the day. It's, look, I'm saving a couple of hundred dollars. Mm. I mean... But that's the road that you chose, and I've had a lot of them clients call me and tell me, look, you know, can you come and fix his work? And I tell them, no, I'm sorry. No, you were trying to do it. No. What if someone bought something and the work was already there and they're just not happy with it? Like, they didn't actually choose to have that person there. Can they tell you that? Can you, would you... Look, that's different. Like, that's different. I mean, if, if you're going into... If it's coming down... Mm. If it's coming down... Oh, it's come down. You let's say you're renovating. Up. Let's say you're renovating, yeah. okay? And it's coming down and you want to redo... That's different. fine, because okay. you're going to renovate either way. But to bring me in and tell me, look, you know, I need you to fix whatever someone has done, I won't fix it. Okay, makes sense. Because it's, to me, it's a respectable code from artist to artist. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, at, it, it's not nice to say that someone has come and touched up your work when you're the artist. You've signed on it, mm. but this isn't my work. I get you. Someone's touched it. For sure, but it's not my work anymore. You you take away that you take away that pride from him, you know. Mm -hmm. So that is one rule that I've got, and the second and and the second thing that I, that I do have, okay, the second rule that I have, which a lot of people still reach out to me, and I tell them the same thing over and again. Um, it is a controversial topic, okay. Like I said before, I don't mean to offend anyone by saying this. Um, I mean, I, I don't think it will offend anyone, but I'm not targeting specific people but i don't do anything in regarding tattoos oh well nothing in regarding tattoos okay. that's, that's interesting the moment you message me and tell me i want a tattoo design mm. my brain shuts down okay so it's more like i'm not gonna do that yeah it's i do not touch my friend my brother he also works on the podcast as well, whenever he's available. Has been he talking, <laughs> he's been talking about a tattoo since we were kids. He hasn't got one yet. I told him you're never going to get one. He keeps, yeah, yeah, watch, 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 watch. When I get married, when I do this, when I do that. Yeah, it's when always when I leave the house. When, yeah, yeah, when I leave the house. When Liverpool win the title, they've done everything. He still hasn't got anything. <laughs> so, look, I understand this tattoo thing because I'm over it as well. He's never getting one. And I don't know if he's watched until here. He has because he will be listening. Look, I think personally... Yeah, personally, okay. You would think a lot of people say to me, you know, are, are you are you an artist? If you're an artist, you would have. It's you'd, true as well. You'd have something. Yeah, a lot of them. When do. you go into you know when you go into a tattoo parlor, and I've, and I've and I've heard this from a lot of people, when people go into a tattoo parlor, if the tattooist isn't actually tattooed, they don't trust in them. Yeah, that's fair. I can understand that. I've heard that from a lot yeah, of yeah. people. I mean, I couldn't tell you, but yeah. Yeah, well, funny enough, <laughs> I, 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 when I heard that, I was like, man, the guy's talent has got nothing to do with what's on his body. And like, no, it shows the true passion. Oh, okay. Sorry, but I, I beg to differ. Because if, 
At the end of the day, it's not what's on your body. It's what's flowing through your hand. It's what's coming out of your hands, what you're creating from your mindset, from the inner, not from the outside. I mean, I, can be an, I could be an artist and I could, I, I could mural your whole house. Mm. Doesn't mean, I mean, it shows that I've got passion, but because I don't have a tattoo, doesn't mean that. So you've always not, it hasn't sat well with you. You're just like, you know what? No. Look, if it, was, if it was one thing that I was raised with and I'm proud that I was raised with, I mean, I'm, I'm on the verge of turning 35 now. And you don't look a day over 21. I know, you? I know. Believe me, I know. But my body feels like it's 50. Yeah, I feel like 60. <laughs> <laughs> so there's, there's a, a couple of things, a few things that my parents raised me with, you know, like very strict, direct rules. Yeah. Um, that were basically not so much brainwashed but programmed. Because as kids we get programmed by our parents to sure. grow up a certain way, think a certain way. When we get older, if that program does get hijacked, you know, good luck to you. You know, like your brother, wait till I leave the house. Yeah. <laughs> if you're brother. gonna have that in the back of your mind, then by all means go do whatever you wanna do. <laughs> but alhamdulillah. My parents have raised me, you know, to the utmost, best upbringing. You know, obviously at the time you never think so. You know, you always, uh, now you're not allowed to go out, or, you know, you're not allowed to go hang out with your friends, you're not allowed to go out for a cruise. Why that? I'm 30 years old. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but no, you get, you get my drift, nah, you know what I mean? Yeah, you go to your room and you lock yourself up and you cry and you, you say things under your breath and whatever. And then, you know, and then they told you, this is for your own good. One day you're gonna, one day you're gonna grow older, you're gonna thank me. And it's, it's very true. And uh, honest to God, to all the youngsters that are watching this, if your parents raise you in a specific way that you know deep down is good, take it on board and you will thank them one day. Because hanging out with your friends isn't gonna last a lifetime and they're going to disappear. One day they will disappear, I promise you. And there's nothing that's going to be left but what your parents raised you with. 100%. That is it. Nah, true wisdom there, honestly. One of them things, Allah how sidetracked I get. That's a podcast, podcast. <sighs> you're, you're, it's a platform for you to go wherever you want. Exactly. We, we just went, hello, we're coming back. That's true. So one of them things was, you know, uh, basically in, in, in a better term, stay a blank canvas. Yeah. That's it. You're not Michael Schofield. You're not going into no, break no, into no, prison. No, no, no. I'm, not doing, I'm, not, I'm not doing no uh, <laughs> patterns, no prison break stuff. No, no, no. No numbers, no nothing. If I wanted to draw something, I drew on the walls at home and I got in trouble. So, no tattoos, drawing on the walls. Yeah. And that's what I've done. I drew oh, yeah. all over the walls. And you, know, you turn it into a profession. You're in high demand that people want you from all over the place. Interstate, international. God bless you. So, talk to us about how we met, how we came across. Now, I've been looking at your projects. After the passing, because art translates to world stories. It tells, what is it? A picture says a thousand words or a, it's Correct. greater Correct. than a thousand words. Correct. And uh, you can tell a thousand words. Yeah, and for the life of me, even in school, we always had to study a piece. What did it mean? The symbolism? Is it symbolic? This, that, and the other. And as you grow up, you start to appreciate artwork a lot more. You know, you look at galleries and you're seeing people from different centuries, from different eras, how they thought, how they expressed themselves, what was happening. And it does really tell the tale. It You'll does, appreciate yeah. it more than others. How do you see it when you're looking at all these canvases that are trying to tell you something? Do you appreciate looking at someone else's art? I mean, look, it really comes down to everybody's perspective at the end of the day true you know not everybody views things the same as others you know mm. they had uh, they had a banana in a museum taped up on a wall and it sold for uh, millions of dollars i've never understood that oh, i've never either i oh, don't okay. know that so uh, if, if you want to call that out i've got another guy i've got another guy coming up on my feed he he stabs a bucket and the bucket falls down and everyone claps for him. I don't know if you want to call that art, if you want to call that... Uh, Make a lot of money. Maybe I should have Structural destruction. I don't yeah. know what it is. But if, if you want to call that art, then the art world in this day and age is doomed. <laughs> it's doomed. Uh, I think... Uh, I can appreciate other people's, uh, other people's artwork, but if you're looking at just a, a picture, I think um, 
you can only appreciate it to so much level. I think to understand the picture, to be able to appreciate to, to be able to appreciate it at such depths, you need to go to the artist themselves. Mm, okay. Because look, personally with me, okay, now I will produce you a canvas. Mm -hmm. It looks amazing, you know, it always does. I hope so, but I know myself that, you know, my canvases are always, they're beautiful, they're top quality as well, you know, uh, the, the best the best products, you can throw it in the rain, you can throw water all over it, it'll never fade, it'll never go, it'll never get ruined. In saying that, I think to be able to appreciate it more, you need to go to the artist because every artist at the moment where he's making something, themselves, they're going through a process of emotions, mm. you know, uh, a lot of people, they pour their heart into an artwork, you don't know. Yeah. Um, if there's a mistake, if there's something, if there's a hidden message, if anything of the such, it's always if you can go and get a a a background, a small story, or anything like that of the actual artist, you will truly. If, there will always be a story. Yeah. There will always be a story. I have made canvases. I have done murals. I have done so many things that nobody has actually come to me and said to me, hey, talk to me with the process of making this. Now you're telling me, if I made you a canvas and I gave it to you, mm -hmm. you'd be wowed. Yeah, I'm looking at one. Yep. <laughs> but then if I sat down with you and you said to me, talk to me about... Talk to me about the step-by-step the -step process or the emotions that you feel or the or whatever it was at the time being, that would also be added into the appreciation mm -hmm. of the artwork itself. So if you want to talk about appreciation of, of other people's work, I think I definitely do appreciate other people's work, but to a certain extent until I know the backstory. Okay, so you have to hear it from the source of the person. I have to know the backstory. Okay. There's a lot of people that look at a, you know, go to a museum at, I need to know why he done that. Mm. Why did he put that red stripe through a beautiful canvas? Why? What's the backstory? Mm -hmm. No one knows until you go to the artist himself Makes or herself. A Makes a lot of sense. And when I came across you, I was inspired because you were telling stories. And I, I, obviously now we're in testing times. There's a conflict in the Middle East. And your artwork has come to give people confidence. It gave someone a... And you look at this, the life that they've lived, and I'm referring to the artworks that you have done, and for me as well, of Samah to Sayyid Hassan Nasrallah. A man who lived his life defending his people, liberation, and ensuring that his life spoke for itself. Now, you went on and you have now done multiple artwork pieces. Talk to us about that, and then what inspired you to do that, because you've done a lot of great work. You've told the message, you've, you've said a way for people to understand, to connect in different okay, ways, yes. shapes and forms. Like, I know I'm rambling on because I mean, no, you okay. know a lot more than me. It is an initiative that is admirable because you're doing your part in your field to show, of course, to I, showcase I, I, something I def, to that level. I definitely am, I definitely Talk am. Talk how that come about though, like it's not an easy decision though. Um, or look, was it? Well, I don't know. It all, it, it didn't start. Uh, it didn't start just recently now after after the announcement that he passed away. No. I'm going to put it at that. Um, it started a bit before that. Um, I had actually had a client that reached out to me and said, hey, um, would it be okay for you if you mm. done me a portrait of Sayyid Hassan? And I said, no, not at all. I'll do it for you, of course. If you can give me a context, I can do it for you. Because, mm -hmm. like I said before, you know, 90% of my clients, they come to me and they tell me, look, Ali, I want something. Okay, what do you want? Their response is always, I don't know. Yeah. So, as long as you can give me a context of what you want or what you have 
uh, imagined in your head, okay, in order for you to tell me, look, I want something, there has to be something that'll pop up in your brain to, you know. Of course. So what's the context? Anyway, it was, uh, look, I want, a, I want a photo of, uh, I, want a, I want a canvas artwork of Sayyid Hassan and something to do with the Hizb. I said, okay, no worries, leave it to me. Um, and I did. I I done her. I done her that artwork, and it was gone. And you know, a lot of times when it when it comes to canvas work, now I specialize more in mural work, uh, restaurants, houses, okay. you know, cafes. I go around. So on the wall. Suburbs, suburbs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, okay. I'm doing things on the wall. I'm doing designs for people on the wall when they're you know building shops and whatnot and so forth. Um, so canvas work wasn't really uh, a big thing for me, um, and between between that Hazab canvas, that Sayyid canvas, I started to get a lot of um, other canvas uh, requests from from other people, you know. Um, of people who have uh, passed away for them, you know, things like that. Allah Allah Mu'minin Um And then the Hazab one popped up again, and it was from a friend of a friend of mine, and he asked me to do me another one of the Hazab, and then I did. That one was. The Sayyid Hassan, the Sayyid Hassan with the with the Hazab flag, and uh, the Quds in the in the in the background. Okay. And then I thought to myself, you know what? It's it's not so much of a uh, an idea of business that I, that I had at the end of the day. It was more of a if if you look at if you look at my um, if you look at my past jobs, I actually made a reel um, with one of the hazard ones that I've done, and it said on it um, at the startup before the review of the canvas, it said, uh, "Oh, what did it say? Sorry, I'm just gonna yeah, you can pull it up. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go to it real quick. Um, it said." So this is the job that your friend of a friend had asked for, or is this no? This is when you revealed. No, the real... this is this is this is the idea and the concept that I had in my mind after the, that that job that had okay. taken place. Um, I've got it here. It said. So we're just pulling it up just for the view. Sorry, guys. I think Insta with us. I think Instagram has deleted it. Really. Yeah, because yeah, when it gets to it, have you got backlash? Have you had any pushback? Oh. Have the police been involved? Have you been trolled? Have organisations oh, tried to pull go. you down? We've got it. So, I'm going to show that to the camera. So you had an artwork for many, a statement for plenty. Wow. Which is what it, what it yeah. was. Yeah. And then, you know, it shows, it actually shows that artwork. That is that artwork. Yeah. So okay. Yes. That 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 was the artwork, and I think I saw that one. That's that that caught my eye. That one. Because we are, we we're in such a controversial time, and and you know a, a state of war, basically. It's not a genocide. It's just in, yeah, we, inconceivable. What's happening? Can't so fathom. I wanted to make a voice for myself yeah. as well, mm. not from a business perspective. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. It wasn't from a business perspective. I wanted to reach out now. I wanted to create awareness because I see a lot of people, you know, look, we were just talking before about what can I do? 100%. So uh, in the end, I thought to myself, look, this is really good for the people and it can raise, you know, awareness. People will, will get a sense of, uh, a sense of their pride back, you know, uh, the sense of hope, you know, because obviously we have, such a large following, more than the media knows, for Sayyid Hassan. Uh, so well, there's a person that liberated his land. Of he was course, there for the people. He's a person that, 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 that was a voice for the voice. He's a person that fought for the 
uh, for the one they could, could the have fought for themselves, for yeah. their freedom, for, 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 for their land, for everyone. No one for he, everything. He wasn't a conqueror. He didn't invade. When nobody he, else was doing anything, he stood up and done something. And he taught us that. And he wasn't even a government. He no. wasn't even he, he. If you really want to talk, you know, uh, he wasn't even Lebanon. He might as well be Lebanon as a whole, because he was the only one that stood up and done something. Yeah, he gave Whereas the rest of the world sat back and watched. Most definitely. Okay. And it's admirable now, that you took it on yourself, though, to express that with your artwork. Of course. Not a lot I, of people do that. I, 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 took, I took that on, and I, I knew I was going to get back, backlash with it. But, hey, look, I was raised with thick skin, you yeah. know? So you're going to have to do a lot more than just write to me, you know, just... Ah, uh, whatever. I get you. Oh, see you later. Off to the next, you know? So there was a lot of backlash. There was a lot of people. Uh, there was a couple of phone calls. Um, Knox, whatever it was, um, but whoever wants to come, come, Allah Salah. Yeah, look, we, we you, can, you can come. We live in a it's country not. with law and order, though, so we don't want to advocate for any uh, no, 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 or no, incite it's not, anything. It's not looking for trouble at the end no, of the no, day, we're but not. We're you know, not. but but we're advocating for our people. Of course, the podcast is doing the same. Of we're course, going out to it. fundraisers. We're trying to help and bring awareness because at the end of the day, that's all we can do. Accountability. We're trying to speak on behalf of people who are displaced. People who don't have the basic necessities. Uh, we're going into the cold winter months and the nights. People have and left have their blankets. homes. They don't have blankets. Yeah, 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 they have blankets. Pillows. Food. For, what, for, for, the, for the most simple thing that we take for granted here. No, 100%. Over there is, uh, it's a dream come true for them. 100%. Look, right now, right now, just to breathe fresh air. Right now. Yeah. Between all the rubble and, and the gases and everything that's flowing in the air over there. Yeah. Just to breathe fresh air. Yeah, yeah. To them, it's a dream right now. It would be a dream. But like I said before, like... The repercussions pillow, that's to come. After the 2006 war, and any war that's eventuated anywhere in the world, you see the cancers and the certain things that pop up after the fact because all the chemicals that have happened, all the food and the malnutrition, and yeah, all the devastation course. There's, there's no backlash for that. There's going to be a long-term effect. Yes. We haven't seen any of it is. yet. Of course there is. Look at what's it called. Look, at, I'll, I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. Hiroshima. Yeah. All right, okay. Yeah. Let, let's fall off topic for a second. Yeah, yeah. But Hiroshima, yeah, yeah. okay, they got bombed and dropped the what's it called? Done. And a lot of chemical. Yeah, yeah. It was a, chemi it was a chemical warfare uh, mm. bombing as well. Nothing survived in the area for 70, 80 years after? Till now, there's still... The, the people who are being born in Hiroshima are still being born with, with defects. Yeah. And so now, with, with what's happening in Lebanon... We don't know what the repercussions are going to be in the long run. Allah. Yes, they sent us back how many years, but for what's going to come with that, we don't know. Cause and effect. You can only yeah. expect something to come. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be with them and bless them and Amen, reward them for their difficulties. Amen, Ya Rabbi. Amen, because ya Rabbi. as the Quranic verse says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, inna al-usri yusr. With difficulty comes ease and we pray that the ease comes quickly. With the reappearance of the yeah, Imam yeah, and Inshallah, the return of the Sayyid. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then we will do a couple more artworks. God bless you. So you did that and you've embarked on that. That's admirable. Look, when, when, I, when I started to do the artworks again, okay, um, people were asking for um, a lot of designs, a lot of stuff of, uh, of Sayyid Hassan, okay. And then when the actual... Once again, when it was announced of his passing, no. okay, I didn't see it at a business point of view. Mm. I'm not going to say anybody else, but I think a, a lot, majority of people would have taken the chance at, at, at such a circumstance. Exploiting the opportunity. To raise. No, for sure. To raise prices. You dropped prices. You I dropped. You did a sale. Yeah. I dropped. And it's still on sale till now because I know the love that everybody has for him. And how, you know, uh, us as people that follow him, no, a lot of people yeah. will, will do anything to have a, you know, to, to have something like that in their houses. So what and I they're done, one of one as well. It's not something that can be mass produced with what you're doing. Correct. It's not something that I, that you would just, you know, print and sell off like like shirts or something. Yeah. It's not like that. I don't I don't I don't do prints. I will not do prints. I never do prints. I like my my clients on a personal personal scale. I like my clients. My, I like my clients to have original pieces. Yeah. Not a print off. Mm. It's an original piece. 
okay, I give you a, a, a discounted good price, okay, I put my heart and soul into it, and it, the thank you, I love it, you are amazing, thank you so much, mm. that's, that's all I ask in return, the money for me, honest to God truth, it's not that important. To raise to raise the awareness, like at the end of the day, okay. But you know, there's heart, and then there's heart that Most people want, for sure. okay. Keep it realistic, you know. Help the people. That's what I'm trying to do. I want people mm. to still have hope, to still have that, you know, that 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 joyfulness in in their heart, and the hope that we we will come back and we will stay strong. Nah, God bless you. Okay. Honestly, we definitely will stay strong, and it. If somebody wants a piece in their house, I mean, I'm always leaning with my clients as well. Like, oh, look, man, it's out of my budget. Oh, no worries. I'm not the type of person that will tell you. Oh, sorry, that's my price. I don't want to say yeah, that too much. It's the people crop on the whole day attack here. No, no, Listen, that's there's fine. a price that Say it, <laughs> say it, Hassan, for everyone. God bless you. Honestly, God bless you. Thank you. So you did that initiative and the people got on board. Now, we're going to get to the know. crux of it. Yeah, of course they did. The Talk to us about my piece, mate. What did it do to you? Which Talk one? to us about the stress. The one for me. I love you. I've been waiting for this. For the viewers, I'm actually waiting. I'm hearing it live. There's a story, and the Jay wants to hear it. There is no story. The story was that I took off work to finish your piece. Is that what it was? <laughs> I love. Oh, is it really? <laughs> I actually did, but yeah. yeah. Oh, I love you. What are you? Yeah. Oh, God I bless did. you. I did. I, I, I took off. I took off work. Um, I took off I work to do like your piece. If you tell me, I'll no, tell no, you no, 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 no. It's not like that. It's not like that. But obviously, look, look. I had to. Look, alhamdulillah, I, 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 I told my wife probably every second day, you know, I sit there and I gaze, you know, I just, I, I go into the abyss, as they say, you know, and I just sit there and I think to myself, like, it, it, I'm just lost for words. And then she says, are you all right? Are you all right? I'm just overwhelmed. Yeah. I am, I'm overwhelmed because, like I said before, I sacrificed. And I sacrificed so much. I sacrificed everything that I had that, that was basically a lifestyle. Um, friends and going out and restaurants. I'm not talking about, you know, clubbing and drinking. No, no, for no, sure. None of that. No, but, yeah. like, you know, just, just the, the social just the social life. The, yeah. the social life. If my friends come over, I promise you, they, they, they're sitting on the couch while I've got a canvas in front of me. I, I need to meet my, my clients' demands at the end of the day. It's a demand. That's it. You know, it's not, not, oh, take your time. It's never take your time. I know deep down that, hey, man, look, this guy's excited to get his stuff. Oh, He's excited to get yeah, his canvas. It's true. Take your time, but to a certain extent, but these things do take time. Um, quality work is, is a lot, a lot, a lot of work. I mean, you could just imagine if I'm doing murals, if I'm doing, um, if I'm doing a one meter by one meter canvas, it's taking me about 40 hours. Wow. If you're going from, uh, from, from sketching up, drawing up, and then you've got to get rid of your, your, your sketch up so no lines show when you do paint, because the worst thing in my in my field that, that that I absolutely hate is after you finish a after you finish a drawing or a portrait or anything, and you see the pencil markings. Mm. I don't like that. Keep it professional. There's a lot of artworks that I see out there. I'm not naming anyone or saying who. I know who, but there's a lot of times where I get close to their work and I see all the lead pencil markings everywhere. Be professional. Do it right. If you're charging. Charge accordingly. Yeah. If you're going to charge accordingly to well outcome, mm. give a well outcome. So that's, that's my mindset. If it's not perfect, it doesn't leave my studio. Shall I be outside? It's not leaving till I'm done. No. I've got a lot of clients that come to here, I'm here. So I go get a coffee, come back. I'm touching up. I need to make this perfect. Yeah. You know, you came a bit earlier. That's a you problem. Yeah, yeah. You have that accountability to I work. need to give you the most perfect thing. 100%. I had, to give, I had to give you... Uh, there's one guy that came from Wollongong. God bless him. He came from Wollongong to come pick up his canvas. He took it outside. We were talking in conversation. He was all, wow, 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 wow. I spotted there was one dot that shouldn't have been there. One dot. I took it back into my studio. I told him, wait here. 
I went into my, into my studio and I fixed it and I corrected it and I done everything. I sat inside for about 15 minutes to correct the dot and I brought it back out to him. It has to be A1 quality, perfect, full stop. Your canvas... <laughs> We're back here. I'm a bit, a bit nervous. I'm actually hearing this live. Your canvas... <laughs> So obviously, look, I, I have a I have a list, you know. Yeah. I have a list of canvases, and I swear I am oh. getting to your canvases. Oh. I was watching this from my people. I am getting to your canvas. Believe me. When your canvas came up, say so yes, I did. I took a day off work. All right. I put someone else in charge for the day, and I was up on your canvas from the night before. I started it, and then I got up on it from 6 in the morning. We're back, we're back, we're back. I can't believe it. The camera people, they're asleep. <laughs> we asked them one job, if it clicks, second time it clicks. He was, in, he was in his monologue. You know, actually, funny story of that morning, how I woke up. Oh, well, here, man, I'm in a lot of trouble here. Go no, no, talk no. To, no, you're not, no, you're not in trouble, okay? So I woke up at 6 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> I woke up at 6 o'clock in the morning we're and I got up on my canvas. <laughs> I got up on my canvas at 6 o'clock in the morning. I took the day off so I could sit in my room, in my safe haven, and I will just, that's it. Once I start working, my mind is gone, okay? Mm. There's, there's a certain, I can only work when I'm in certain moods. I need to be in a certain mood, certain mindset, certain music even. So you have to have a vibe. Certain sounds. I have yeah. to put myself in a in, in, in a vibe, exactly. I message you. Your vibes are on point. Your lapmias, your nashids, your yeah, emotions. Yeah, 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 yeah. You haven't had an Izel yeah, moment no, as well. Look, no, I've watched that. Yes. <laughs> I message you. I like the vibe. I'll get you. Look, it's... it's You're not, feeling emotional then, I believe. Not every, yeah, it, it's not every time. It's not, it's, it's, uh, it's not every time that I've got nashids playing. It's actually more, uh, to be completely honest with you, it's more piano. Piano. When I hear the piano, it's my mind drift. So you want a rhythm so that is going to complement your work? Is that what you're saying? The piano is to put me in a certain mood. Mm. When I'm in a certain mood, I'm able to produce. If, if at some point, let's say, change of track, if we go from... If I'm like completely steady, okay, and I'm working away, I'm in the flow, I'm in the flow, I'm completely out of this world, my mind is gone, because I, I, to, to be honest with you, like when I, when I start, when I get that rhythm, my mind goes blank, mm. and my, I just let my hands do the work. So when that happens, if, if the rhythm of music or whatever I've got playing in the background changes the mood, let's say if we go from slow piano or a down for uh, cello or violin, okay? It's always orchestra. It's always orchestra. Mm. What's a cello? The cello. Never heard of it. The cello, it's a musical instrument, the oh, cello. I got kicked out of music class, so I didn't, I didn't finish it. <laughs> I just have to stop, sorry, but keep going. Violin, violin, it's a classic. Uh, that, that one I know. It's classic, it's classic, it's classic uh, not to the cello. It's technical stuff here, yeah, I'm learning. Anyway, so if, um, oh, you got to hear when listen to the triangle. Is that actually a thing? I thought that was only in preschool. That yeah, ding, 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 ding. Is that real? No. <laughs> oh, sorry. Far out. I did get kicked out of visual arts as well. Taz, you know, the woodwork, electronics. I was yeah, actually yeah, 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 a hazard yeah. to the... I thought I hacked <laughs> the system. You were the hazard. Apparently, because I was complaining and I was getting other people to do my work and they got sick of me. <laughs> um, sorry. Well, you're you're, no, no, you're no, trying no. to move the Pia Tang triangle. What the hell? So, if the track does mix up into a different type of genre, say so R&B would come on, or a song would come on, anything, it, it's, it's automatically drawback. Automatically okay, so drawback. Reset there, yeah. Because it's, now it's, it's, it's different tune, it's different flow. Okay. So when I'm working to the, to the slow orchestra playing, okay, like piano, or like you heard, Izel, mm. okay, Izel, it's it's uh, couldn't get over it's sa it's saddening okay but it's it flows with me because I initially bit of a background on me now mm. I initially started from a sad place with drawing okay. so that's what I got used to okay. to produce 
the best quality of work. Okay. So I naturally, okay, sometimes I, I purposely bring myself down. Mm, okay, yeah. So you got to get into that state. I have to get, I have to get into an upset mood to be able to let my hands flow with what I want. You know what's crazy? I'm the total opposite. So I've got an assignment. You now. need to be happy. I've got to do my thesis. I've got about six thousand words in two days that I've got. So I'm I'm murked and I've got four exams next week. When this drops, it's not going to be relevant. But anyway, mm. I've got to be in a revolutionary resistance, change the world vibe. Oh, but that's different. You're writing on something. Yeah, I'm a different genre. I'm saying, but if I'm not in that, if I'm not in that mood, I can't deliver. If yeah, I'm, but I could, I could only if imagine. I'm tired, I don't. And I've got one day. I'm like, yeah, I'm stuffed. I'm gonna die. Finish. I don't want. Yeah, but I could only imagine if you're writing a thesis and you're writing, and you listen to something sad, you're gonna be sitting. There, you're gonna. We've lost. Yeah, no, no, no. All hope. <laughs> But, but if you're listening to something uplifting, uh, I've got to yeah, you're change the world. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, blah, 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 blah. It's, it's different. It's a different scenario. But when it's, uh, a, I would like to think it's a it's a completely different context because it is. I think it is. When you want a when when you're writing something and producing something, is I think it's completely different because mm. producing something whether I like it or not, I have to produce this. Yeah, and there's different levels of quality that I can bring to the table. Yeah. To be able to bring my best quality to the table, I need to bring myself down. When I bring myself down, my head empties, okay? And I would sit there for hours on end in one stable position. No movement and very, 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 very limited breathing. Wow, so you got to get very into limited state. breathing. Because look, I, I'll, I'll give you an example, okay? And this, I'll do this for the camera. I work with airbrush. I don't work with pencil. I don't work with, with anything like that. So it's all airbrush stuff. Now, if I'm holding the airbrush like this, have you got a pencil or something? No, look, are they, they, anyway, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You just, you, you, you just have to watch. You yeah. just have to watch, okay? So we'll go that way. So we'll go to the camera that way. This is my stability hand, okay? This is my stability. The airbrush sits here. And then I got my trigger hand. I got my trigger hand, my trigger finger that where, where I play with the airbrush. So down is air, back is paint. The more you go back, the more excessive paint you get. So you need to really catch that flow of when you want to meet line to line, you got to really catch it. There's no, okay, there's the line and keep going. You've just created the circle now. Okay. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So you really need to really, really, really focus. So when I'm sitting there, we're going back to the limited breathing now. If I'm doing a line or I'm drawing up something or whatever it may be, if I breathe, okay, let's say there's, that's the, that's the airbrush. If I breathe, look what happens. Oh, he's dropped. Yes, his movement's not stable. If anyone thinks I'm doing it, I'll purposely do it yourself and you have a look. Yeah, yeah I'm not stable. You move. Job. Yeah. Once I'm airbrushing, it's hold your breath and go. Yeah. When you want to breathe, stop. When you want to go again, take a big breath. There's a lot of detail in your work, man. It's, it's a very limited high breathing. High pressure, high stakes, man. God bless you. So that day, I took it off. Six o'clock in the morning, I got up. I sat on your canvas. My wife, you know, I I uh, I got up in the morning to go, you know, wake her up. You know, it was it was like eight thirty. She had to work at nine o'clock. So I walked into the room, you know, and hey, wake up. You right, get up. It's like, oh, oh no, I missed my alarm. <laughs> she said, what? You never missed your alarm. She said to me, oh no, no, I took the day off work. Oh no. <sighs> oh no, the Jay's gone. <laughs> oh no, double trouble. So he took a day off work and I've stitched you up with my deadline. Yeah, so then. Um, the, you had I, you called the Jay, I would have told you I, this. I, I, I really. Take a week off. <laughs> Put me next week. <laughs> so yeah, I, I, I really I really had to put the ground rules that day saying, you know, listen, I didn't take the day off to have fun, I need to work. So I'm getting to work. So even um oh, yeah. even my lunch break was a was a twenty minute break, twenty six minute, thirty minute, thirty minute turned into forty five minute. Oh, that's why you're sleeping here tonight, huh? You're staying yeah. here, well. Oh. She just came to check in on you. 
Nah, she's a this. She's a legend. Nah, she stayed in support of the whole day, the whole day. She'd only walk in. Are you hungry? Are you good, baby? You need to take care of everything. I'm good. That's what it takes, so, hey, honestly. You know what? It's, for for it's, anyone, to, either or. It's 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 a it, it's a it's a beautiful thing to have. It's such a blessing. I, I I told my wife, and you are the you are the biggest and the best blessing I have ever received in my life. And it's and it's true, and I stand by it. My God bless you. I don't I don't, I don't just say it. It's um. You probably just said it for the camera. And when it turns no, off, no, you're gonna no, stop no, it. no. I said it to the other night. <laughs> I said to her that I'm not, don't get me in trouble. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, yeah, so, so I sat on that canvas. Um, I, I, I had to do what I'd done. Um, so, mood drop. I had to drop my mood all the way. Um, but the, the, I'm but still the, looking at it, that's why I went far. The good thing, the good thing about that, yes, a lot of people, when I say to them, you don't know how your canvas was made. You don't know. You don't know what went into your canvas. You don't know what your canvas went through. Mm. You know. You don't know what your canvas has seen behind my closed doors. Mm. You don't know what happened. If a canvas could talk, it would tell you. Mm. Funny story. Okay, not so funny, but. Um, I done a canvas once, and he went away to Queensland. Um, I hand delivered it. It was a, it was a canvas of uh, Beauty and the Beast, and I hand delivered it to Queensland. You know, obviously, you know they paid for the shipment, whatever, my tickets, the stays, and whatnot. Um, then I took it there, and it was the only letter. I have ever written with a canvas and given it with my oh, artwork. Okay. So it is the only letter out there that is written with a canvas and I've handed it. And the letter obviously said, you know, basically, thank you for saving this canvas. You don't know what this canvas has seen. You don't know what this canvas has gone through. You don't know what this canvas has dealt with. Wow. It, it might be corny, but if you really want to think about it, it's pretty deep coming. <laughs> so, what goes on behind the scenes in order to make something? I mean, just like, just like a blood diamond. Mm. For you to have a blood diamond, for you to have a diamond, you don't know what, you don't know sure. the amount of people that have sure. been, you know, Killed child workers, um, sacrificed the, the, pirates, hierarchy, monarchs. Exactly, for you to have a little piece of diamond. You yeah. don't know what's behind it. So, Crazy. I wanted to go a bit more deeper when uh, when I speak about basically the canvas that I that I done for someone. Look, you don't know. You don't know what your canvas went through to be what it is now by the artist and its environment. So behind every artwork, there's always a story. Wow, and that's actually touching because it goes back to what you said earlier when I asked you about other people's artwork. You basically said only they know what the struggle is exactly. and the journey and the trials, tribulations. Exactly. What yeah. they all gone through, how they were feeling, the emotions, why they did certain things. Mm. And it's great insight because the people watching now will see something that they don't otherwise know of you because of they didn't have the opportunity. They have either not crossed your path, they haven't, purchased your work, they haven't worked with you. There's a million reasons why they wouldn't know you, but this is something now they can have an insight. Also, people that will have an insight are young artists that are looking, that are aspiring to be like you, that are probably on pencil as well, that are trying in these times to be symbolic, to try and put their hearts on their sleeve, so to say. Yeah, look, uh, whenever I come across someone's page, you know, of of a young artist, you know, obviously uh, pencil on paper, it, it reminds me of myself when I first started. Mm. You know, th- they lay out a few things, you know, for the camera. You know, i had done it all. You know, when I was younger as well, taking photos and, you know, videos. Um, but I always like to, uh, you know, if I can encourage anyone, if I can, if I can lift someone's spirits, and it goes a long way, you would actually believe uh, that it does, it does go a long way. Now, I, I don't see myself as this high... Um, this this big artist figure, you know what I mean? I mean, I'm not even, 
I'm not even on such a, a great scale where I'm known everywhere. I mean, I, I do get many people that well, I'm surprised. Like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm blown away most of the time. You know, they know who I am. They walk up mm. to me like, excuse me, are you such and such? And I'll be like, yeah, that's me, that's me. I'll, go, I'll giggle like a little girl. Uh, <laughs> you get excited. You're like, the people know me. My work's been appreciated. Yeah, so uh, like, it's a good feeling. Like, yeah, it really is. Like, it, it, it really, really is. It really, really is. And like I said before, you know, uh, sacrifices everything and you get there at the end um, takes time but it, nothing happens overnight nothing happens in, in a day a week a month a year 100%. you have to really you 100%. know stick it out and and whatnot now as as a young as a young growing artist I mean the sky's the limit at the end of the day if you're if if you're not producing good work now you will eventually produce good work I mean I'm I'm living proof I'm I, I, I'm there now. I was there before. I started on a a pencil and a paper, and I was I done it all. Mm. You know, I never sold anything. I wasn't making money or anything like that. I was, you know, just whatever, doing it as a hobby. Um, but if you're thinking money wise, the way that I see it, if you're thinking money wise, you won't succeed. If you're passionate, you will succeed. Because it pays for itself later in the long run. It gets there in the long run because it's your passion. Oh, if, yeah. you, if, you, if, you're, if you're chasing, if you're chasing the buck, okay, it's gonna be very hard to get there because there's only so much tolerance you're gonna take when I'm not making money. I'm not making long money. Long it's tough. There's you're only run. so much tolerance until you For reach sure. the level of stuff. This I'm not gonna do this anymore. Hundred percent. Put it aside. Move to the next thing. If you're not passionate about something, if yeah. you're not willing to to die for it, to to, to be absolutely uh, mind and soul and body invested. You're doing the wrong thing. But you're saying there's always hope if you're putting in the art. Of course, of course. So there might be hope for me then. Inshallah. Year seven. My only parent teacher interview my dad ever went to. One of the meetings of the visual arts teacher. It's too late for you. Nah, but listen to this, right? <laughs> what do you mean? My dad's full proud. This bloke is like, we finally had a parent teacher interview. I'm like, oh, it's cute. It's a nice moment. We're here. It's his last one as well. He's like, your son needs to practice to draw straight lines. <laughs> Man. Look, visual arts, I'm not the most, I can imagine things, I can't execute. I don't know how to do it, I've got no talent, I've got no hope. But give us a test, test us with something about art, you know what I mean? 2B, HB, XB, 4B. Give the J, the people want to see the J being questioned. One question, on the spot, maybe I should get it. You know, not too hard, obviously I won't get it. What's something in art that I should know? That you should know? Yeah, something about utensils or an execution or... I don't know, bruh. I'm struggling. I got kicked out in yourself. <laughs> what can I tell you? What can I test you with? Uh... Oh, then critique me as a client when I wanted the, uh, the image to come through. I did have some creative... Have you got creativity? Yeah, no, well, no from, your, from our interaction, when I was, uh, before you did the canvas, I obviously had to try and explain what I want. Write me on a scale one to ten. Tell the people the hell was it? Oh, he's laughing. Jeez Louise. I thought I expressed myself decent. I mean, you took it to another level. I'm not going to sit here and say I had any of that. I mean, you did, you did, but... Um, yeah, tell the people because it's you, a nice insight. Okay, well... Um, God, jeez. No, nah, don't hold back. You were creative with what you wanted. Yeah. You were creative with what you wanted. But Three things I said only. <laughs> but you didn't know how to go about it, so... Yeah, that's where I trust the professionals like Exactly. Yourself. Yeah. That's where I tell that's you, where you tell me your context. That's it. And I create. And I trust that. If you're able to create, yes. Then okay. For example, all right. Do you draw do you colour in the lines or do you draw out of the lines? Well what what have we always been taught at school or whatever it was? Well, I tell you, within the lines. Colour between the between lines. Between the lines, Go yes. out of the lines. Expand. Create. Uh -huh. Design. you got to get Imagine. Out yep. Don't be bound by a circle to be colouring in or, or mm. stay in between the lines. Get out. Think outside the box. No one, the, saying is, the saying is never think inside the box. Just it's think outside the box. So if if you want to be if you want to be creative or visual or even get into an artistic mindset or uh, you know you, you need to be able to uh, to bend to bend and manipulate reality that's in front of you to be able to create something 
That's wise. That's wisdom. Like, I feel so, it. Look, I feel it. So, th- look th- there's, there's... I'll do tracing, man. I'm still on that. And even then I stuff it up. Look, there's a lot of times... <laughs> There's a lot of times where I go to, um, there's a lot of times, someone's even recorded me, I swear, I've, I've got it back from about seven years ago. Um, someone's recorded me um, when I went in to do a mural, I was doing a mural, and they just see me doing, you know, these ones, just like that, or I go like this, and then I shift, and then I'll, but in every movement, I'm moving everything, and I'm shaping everything to the way that I want it. So I can visualize. Mm. So I'm able to, to basically shift, like I said before, shift and manipulate and, and bend. You need mm. to be able to bend the reality that's in front of you to be able to create and design something that's out of the ordinary. Yeah. No, God bless. So to, to be thinking outside the box, to be coloring in outside the box is where you should start. That's where you get. That's where you get your creativity from, and your mindset will just flow it, without, without being, uh, without imagination. You've got nothing. I'm with you, hundred percent. If you can't imagine something, if you're not, look to, to imagine something is is easy. To put it onto paper is completely different. It's like it's it's like basically doing copy paste, but that cop, but that copy and then the paste level. It's another level. That could that could take you that could take you weeks. Well, that's could, the difference between ordinary and extraordinary, mate. That's why people uh, come to look, you. We're You're the one who able, executes. No, nah, we're all able of extraordinary things. We For are sure, in different all realms. Are. Able to no nah, different. As realms. Mullah Nazar said, stay in your lane. We have to yeah. stay in our lane. We are in our lane. But You're we, in your lane. But I can't be in your lane. I can't. I'm telling you. You can be in my lane if no, you merge no. hard enough. I can't be bothered merging, but, <laughs> but I have the talent. I have the, but you got to have potential. You can't tell me. She told me I can't draw a straight line. You want me to draw that? Oh, well, you should have scribbled it for her. Yeah, that's true. But look, for me, I was excited. I was like, I would no, have that means I've retired. You've yeah. given me a reason to see her later. You can't draw a straight line. People, people tell me I can't draw a stick figure from life depended on. I've heard it so many times. Yeah, they say I that. I can't draw a stick figure. I can. I don't even know how to draw a stick figure. I don't know how to draw a stick figure. I can do your murals, but I don't know how to do a stick figure. I'm sure you can do a stick figure. <laughs> I love you. God bless you. Honestly, bro, it's been a pleasure. Bless the you. insight that you've afforded us is second to none. You've actually allowed us to thank understand you, you. your journey and understand your reasons, motivations, and purpose as to what you do, what you do. Because it's not just something that you click, you send a message, but bang, it's done. It's a lot more to it. Of course. Tell the people watching worldwide, a final message from yourself that you want to broadcast to the people. I think for all the young artists out there, pursue your dreams, keep going. If you don't have a support system, be your own support system. If you don't have anyone guiding you, you are in a, a day and age now where you can get guidance from anywhere. Whether you look on the social media or the internet or whatever it is, it all comes down to how bad do you actually want it. So I think we're all capable of doing extraordinary things. I agree. You know, uh, the impossible is never impossible until it's done. So. Uh, Stick to it, follow your dreams. Um, that's it, basically. Ah, Sant, honestly, that's it. God bless you. It's inspiring. It. The next generation, we have to step up. We have to push the boundaries. We have to go outside the, per- the parameters, as you said. Ah, God bless the next generation. I wonder what they're going to bring to yeah. the table. But I think whatever it is, is going to be... Well, it's documented what you've brought to yeah, the table. I, I mean, We've got an episode on this whole podcast. You've got your pages that people can see. And hopefully they'll reflect, you know, in different generations. They they'll have access will. to things that we didn't have access to. Of course. They've got to run the ball of course, up there. They've of got course. To keep pushing. Um, same here too. When I went on, yeah, obviously when I first started, I didn't, there was no internet around. There was no, uh, there was nothing like that. So it was just books. It was just blank pieces of paper. And, you know, how much can you, how much can you imagine, basically? We didn't have any of that. So now we live in a, we live in a world where uh, things are, the easier they're at our fingertips. Allah. You know, the, the help is always there. Um, don't give up just because it's too easy sometimes. You know, push and strive towards success and you, you will achieve. You 100%. will achieve. You've got to seek and you've got to have that desire because even the of Prophet, peace be upon him, has a hadith 
you have to humble yourself as well. Of course. Because when you're acquiring something, you have to go to a teacher. To go to a teacher and ask a question, you have to humble yourself. You have to come down off your high horse. Of course. And you have to learn. Of course. And you have to go to someone of superior knowledge and all that and more. We've left you with an abundance of wealth, abundance of wisdom, abundance of lesson. Thank you for Amen. joining us. Warat, Habibi. God bless you, Khaye. Habibi. Sharafna, thank you for having me. Ah, thanks for coming on, bro. God bless you.